husband. I also work in the shop, do 90% of the fabricating um, panel uh, removal, panel replacement, things like that. And then, um, so I spend most of my time in the metal room, and I have a lot of tools in the metal room, and I understand that that's not always the case for the average car owner. So I'm going to try, you guys can reel me back in if I start to get off on equipment that you just don't have available. Um, it, Please feel free to interact with like questions. Make me pause if I get too far out there. Um, some of the things that you need to take into consideration when you're starting rust repair is your skill set. That is number one. If you can't weld, you probably shouldn't be doing your own rust repair and panel replacement. Um, there are things like panel glues that you can use but they're not always 100%. They do give you a good strong bond, but you don't really want to use them where people are going to see them and notice they're supposed to be spot welds there, but you use glue. Um, we good? All right. Um, looping up here is some photos of different rust repairs that I have done in the past, and some of those photos will walk you through an entire process. Others of them will show you um, some of the tools and equipment that I like to use. Um, so for example, I brought all the way from Wisconsin my hammer, my dolly, um, this is a spoon dolly, so you need to have equipment for straightening metal, making sure that the damage is removed from the panels before you get too far into taking a panel off. Um, if a panel it has damage, like so if you have rust down here and you've got damage up here, fix the damage first before you remove the rust. Otherwise, it, you, the, the damage up here, if there's a dent, is causing a stress on the metal down here, so it'll spring, it'll change shape, it'll buckle, um, depending on what the panel is doing to you. So you need to make sure that it is straight to begin with and that you know what the piece is gonna look like that you need to make. Um, approach the spot that you're going to be repairing slowly and with a very detailed eye. So you need to look at what's around it, pay attention to body lines, contours, and then when you do cut it out, you wanna make sure you're cutting to a point where you're actually getting clean metal. So this is a headlight bucket off of a Zephyr. Um, this is the inside, that's the outside. So we stripped the paint so that we could kind of see what was going on. This was the lip where the glass sat. Uh, it's mostly not there, so we had to replace it. Now I had to cut it farther back because we had a lot of pitting on the back side and um, it helped with the contour. So this use, this line is where it used to crease and curve both ways. So in order for me to be able to make it, um, I wanted to make sure I didn't have too much metal in any one direction because it was a compound curve with two 90s on the lip. So this would actually be a 90 down where this is, and then there was another lip that came out at another 90, both were a quarter inch. So you're using a metal brake to get that stuff done. Um, if you don't have a metal brake, use a vise and body hammers, things like this. You can use an anvil. Body hammers are not normal hammers. Don't use a claw hammer. They're very different. Are you guys familiar with body tools? Yes? Yes? Okay. No? <laughs> All right. So that's probably a little over your head. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions so far? No? Okay.